you write about your stepfather quite a lot. And yeah. what I like about it is you didn't, you know, you had a, a complicated relationship with him, but there are, there are chapters where you acknowledge how great he was. Oh, yeah. I loved him so much by the end. Well, I get sad now because he's dead. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on my him. period. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that bit out, Ben. <laughs> Not the pit, the whole sad thing. Oh, God. Yeah. But I, um, in the book, it was quite funny because I said, I can't really talk about my family because they don't want me to. Um, but I can talk about my stepdad because he's dead. <laughs> and then I was like, I didn't do it. <laughs> No, we hated each other at first, though. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, but, it's, but it sounds like it was, you know... I, mean, I think you, you would have been... A, you know, you, I, by your own admission, I think, you know, you were probably not an easy teenager to deal with and be the stepfather of. <laughs> yeah, but I was four when I met him, and I was fucking cute at four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was well cute. Yeah. But he was autistic and had his own... Well, we'd never got him tested, but... Um, you know, he's so rude to everyone. You've got to ask some questions. No, I... Uh, cut that as well. That's not going to come across well. I, I, a lot of my friends are autistic, OK? But, um... Of course they are. I do comedy. But, um... No, but he's... You know, he was a sort of man... He was very sensible. Like, wore a lot of brown. Loved train spotting before he met my mum. You know, would say... But he said... He did say once, and I think I put this in the book, where he said... Because everyone was like, do you think you might have... We called it Asperger's at the time, but I don't think you can say that now. But he was like, I, I, I did an Asperger's test once, and I was very bloody good at it. <laughs> <laughs> he liked to be a high achiever, but... But no, I mean, it's funny, those relationships, because it's funny how people read different things into it. So his brother, lovely, my uncle, um, really nice man, and he read the book, and he was like, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't know any of that. You know, I was in my own world. And um, he took away the sort of negative stuff of it. Right. And I thought it was a beautiful story about sort of redemption and forgiveness and how we sort of came together. And I loved him very much in, you know, in the last, in the last sort of 10, 15 years. But he was like, oh, God, I didn't realise he, you know. And you sort of think, oh, he's he's read a different thing to that. Whereas some people read that and thought that he was the hero of the book and yeah. thought that he was, you know, like Al Green texted me and went, your stepdad's so hilarious because he used to, like, write letters. <clears throat> he was very, like, weirdly, like, very moral about certain stuff. And we've all got blind spots, I suppose. But... um he used to write letters to the local paper quite a lot and complain. And then one time he wrote a letter to a brewery to say, you've got loads of crazed memorabilia up. And then he detailed in graphic detail <laughs> their sort of violent crimes on people and like really went to town and then said, do you still want your beer, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> and they took it all down, yeah. which I thought was really nice because why are we like glamorising like absolute like... I don't want to get kneecapped, but scumbags. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I, think that, I think you're safe from the craze now. I think that, They've hopefully. got friends. <laughs> <laughs> got grandkids, maybe, but yes, no, I think you'll be okay. Um, uh, yeah, only, but, but it's, it, is, it is, for you as well, it's a story of redemption, because, you know, it's, it's you, you, you started drinking, uh, as I did mm. as a teenager, so you had a kind of taste when you were about 11, and but started drinking yeah. seriously at 13, which I think is probably, <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think but I, I say that much more with my generation. It feels yeah. like later generations, that's a little bit more unusual for, because, hey, it was a bit harder, I would imagine, to drink. We, we were just drinking in pubs from 14. Yeah, we were. We got, I'd got, the first time I got into a club, I was 13. Yeah. It's fucking mad, that is. Yeah. Like, yeah, mad. And then I went more seriously at, like, 15. 13 was a bit of a one-off, but... Um, yeah, mad. Yeah. So, but you obviously, you know, had a had a taste for alcohol, and you've been, been up and down. You've 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 stopped drinking now, right? Yeah, yeah. ages, seven years or something. Yeah. Don't really miss it. I sort of. Um, yeah, I don't find it that hard to. Obviously, as a massive pisshead, um, but I find it quite easy because because I was on a definite path of destruction, and now I've got the things I want on this path it's very easy to not like if I had one I'd be like it wouldn't be one and I'd be like oh no it'd lose everything so it's quite easy not to drink yeah I mean I've given up drinking as well but I don't not not I don't bang it. on about it no, no, no. <laughs> I do bang on about it but it wasn't you know it wasn't for the same reason yeah uh, but it was just because it was you know I'm old and it started to hurt a bit too much yeah but yeah. I'm, I'm not I'm not missing it at all and it is but it is a weird you know it, it's a difficult thing it's a difficult thing to negotiate right just because of 
that is so in, you know embedded in society, especially well, if you're younger. I think it's so it's so like all of your. No, lots of young people don't drink yeah, now. They're suppose. just like what well, waste yeah. of time and money. But um, like I think, what was I going to say? Okay. <laughs> Mm, great, my memory's come back since not drinking. <laughs> <laughs> what was I going to say? Oh, I can't remember. Still doing crack, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Just liquidise all drugs and drink them in yeah. one big cocktail. That's a, that's a good idea. Uh, but yeah, you know, so there's lots of funny stories of you being drunk and uh, inappropriate. Yeah. Uh, and there's some, there's some sad stories about you being drunk and inappropriate. It's, so it's, it, you know... The... the reason I put the sad stories in as well is because a lot of the time men don't believe that... Because I think every woman, every woman has got like at least one story. And even if they don't, they sort of forgotten. Because yeah. um, we were going around in a circle and so there's like about 10 sort of women. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> and we were all going around and then one girl was like, oh, no, I don't have anything bad that's happened to me like with sexual stuff, you know. And then um, I was like, really? My God, that's amazing. And then, and then she was like, no, isn't that weird? And then she thought for about 10 minutes. She said, oh, there was this, was this, was this. And I was like, there we go. <laughs> um, I think some people don't want to believe that yeah. that's the world we live in. So then I thought, like, oh, well, I don't know. But I, cut, I really cut back on them, actually. <laughs> yeah. But Katie, because I went for dinner. Sorry to keep bringing up Katie's wife, but I went for dinner with her. And, and oh, yeah, because you tweeted. You said, oh, I'm about to... Um, read Lou Santos's book and getting, getting in the bath with Lou Santos. And then I didn't hear from you for about two weeks. And I was like, oh my God, he hated it. And then I saw Katie and he said, and she said, oh no, it just made him really sad. <laughs> well, it made, me, it made me sad about men. And maybe, you know, I think like I've written here that you're like, uh, you know, because you're, you're a free spirit stomped on by reality, but, uh, but still... But risen again. But, yeah, but you didn't, you didn't get, you haven't got crushed by it, which is kind of the amazing thing. That. So it is this story that you... But it's just, it's horrible to, it's horrible to think that, think like, I've... men took, men took advantage of you in the ways that they did. But, you know, I, I, I 100%, you know, I'm aware that that is so what happened. I think that's so many people's story. And yeah, also, that's the negative side. But I think if any life, if you zoom in on, I've had so many good things happen as well. You're not yeah. a sum total of, like, a couple of bad things. No. Like, you, I, I don't like that sort of, like, this. I've been so lucky. You know, think of a woman in a sort of developing country who doesn't have, you know, three healers on rotation. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, can't get access to loads of crystals. <laughs> like, you know, and like my stepdad was a shit to me when I was younger, but like I had the nice thing to like make up with him and see what a wonderful sort of man he turned into. And, you know, my mum's nice and like there's so many good things. It's like if we wanted to see ourselves as a victim, we could always focus on like you know, I mean, everyone got bullied at school, everyone had this, everyone had that. So I don't know, I don't think it that makes you who you are unless you, like, decide it does. And then, like, we're all going to have trauma and we're all going to have, like, astounding great luck. Yeah. So it's what you, like, sort of zoom in on, I think. 